Good morning! It is another beautiful morning here. I'm Rebecca, the Community Outreach Coordinator for Connections, and today I'm on to bust another myth. It was so popular last week, this idea of busting the myth um, that we thought let's give it another shot. So today we are busting another myth and this myth is the idea that kids have nothing to worry about or that they don't worry in some way. And of course um, this isn't true <laughs> but um, as parents you know we have a tendency to really feel like well, what could kids possibly have to worry about? Um, they don't pay the bills, uh, they don't have the relationship issues that, you know, we might have as uh, couples. Um, they don't have to clean the house. They don't have to cook. They don't have to go grocery shopping. They don't have to fix anything that is broken around the house. Sometimes they don't even have to fix the things they break themselves. What could kids possibly have to worry about? And I remember as a kid, sometimes we would say, you know, well, I'm worried about this or that. And mom and dad would say, well, I'll give you something to worry about. <laughs> As though we didn't, like, our, our concerns were, you know, sort of a bit more trivial. Not that um, they're not uh, of a lighter, maybe, nature. But that doesn't mean, of course, that they aren't legitimate and that they don't exist. So let's bust the myth. And I'd like to do that in sort of a three-step process. So the first thing um, I just want to talk about is this idea of the kinds of stress and worry that children might be experiencing. So three kinds of, of worry. The first worry that children um, have is um, an academic worry or a school related worry or stress and that is um, happening whether or not your child is back at school uh, where the stress might be about the new environment uh, the socially distant environment or if you're even learning at home and academic worry usually expresses itself in in multiple ways but what it is basically is a fear of not succeeding and you know uh, we think of success as something connected to the adult realm but children absolutely have that fear of not succeeding as well and a fear of now that we are there um, hi Nat nice to see you now that we are their teachers at home many of us there's a fear of disappointing us there's a fear that perhaps we don't understand um, what it is that their teachers had expected of them. And so we are going to be disappointed in some way or that we're using different methods that they're not familiar with. And there's a stress related to that. So how does that express itself? Often it expresses itself in what seems to us to look like laziness. It's easier for a child to appear lazy or disinterested than to feel like they're embarrassed or disappointing us in some way. So they'll pretend not to care so that they can sort of cover up the embarrassment of not knowing. And so that will express itself in distraction, in fidgeting. Um, it might even express itself in the extreme format of um, tears and fighting with you. So really it's important to recognize that this is not um, an attempt to disengage from learning. All kids want to learn and all kids want to succeed and all kids want to make you proud of them. If you're seeing a child who seems like they're not caring about the lesson, who is breaking down into tears during the lesson, who is fidgeting and not focused during the lesson, this is a good sign that you have a child who is academically worried, worried about their academics. So what can you do? So especially when you see pain, pain expressed in anger, pain expressed in tears, this is a sign to just 
stop. Stop the lesson entirely. And what you say is, listen, this is too hard today. Uh, good work so far. We're going to switch to something else, a new, uh, a new subject or a new study, or we're going to just go outside for a walk and do some science outside, uh, looking at nature, maybe keeping a nature journal. Um, but before we do that, next time, what do you think? How do you think we could make this less and less painful? You know, and by having that conversation with our children, I think it really helps them. And one thing that makes lessons less painful in our house, so the next day when you do go back to that tough lesson, um, is a stick of gum to chew, a warm beverage to drink, maybe some hot chocolate, maybe a cup of tea, and a change of environment. Can you take that lesson to um, the backyard on a picnic blanket? Can you take it out to the balcony? Can you take it to another floor of the house? Can you do it on the bed, on the couch? Thinking about different environments in which to do it. So that's the number one stress that children feel, the academic worry. So we're busting the myth today that children have nothing to worry about. And number one is that sense of academic worry. The second, well, the second um, worry that children experience is the worry of um, too much. There's just too much going on. It causes worry. They might not recognize that there's too much going on um, and you might not see it immediately either, but sometimes children just become completely overwhelmed and too much can be a few things. First of all, a flood of information. Too much information, too many inputs. So a sibling over here talking to them, mommy over here giving them advice on what they should be doing today, uh, daddy now is maybe home and giving advice. You've got the dog barking in the background, the TV's on. All of this is noise that can lead to a sense of anxiety. Also, the fact that children are learning a lot online now, there can be digital overwhelm. If we're looking at the amount of information that they have to learn and finding it too much, Sometimes it is too much, <laughs> okay? It's just digital overwhelm, information overload. Um, the stress of too much can also come from having too much clutter around, not having put away toys after the last game. The, the bedroom is full of toys and books and the beds unmade and all of that adds a layer of mental stress. There's no place for the child to just kind of calm down and be. And um, the last thing, and we're seeing less of this now, less of this kind of worry in children, is this idea of too many activities. So kids, when they were coming home from school prior to the pandemic, were running all over the place, going to this, going to that activity. Their weekends were not free. Um, there was just no downtime. And so that can be a source of worry and anxiety. Some of the symptoms that accompany this might not actually seem like worry, but they are. So physical symptoms, particularly eating differently, eating more, eating less, um, sleep patterns are disturbed, stomach ache, headache, and in rare occasions, but sometimes, bedwetting. So your child may have just suddenly begun to wet the bed and you ask yourself, well, what is going on with this? I know that he or she has been toilet trained for however long. This can be a sign of worry. So the answer, how do we fix that? So lots and lots and lots and lots of free play is the answer. Making sure there's time for downtime and just scaling back the amount of information and the amount of noise and the amount of clutter that surrounds your little one can make an enormous impact on just decreasing that kind of worry. So that's number two. So two, two of the ways children worry, academic worry, the too much stuff worry. And even though kids say they want more, more, more toys, more, you know, video games, more TV, more everything, it's up to us as parents to remember it, 
that there is a worry that gets connected with this. It might be subconscious on their part, but it's our role to really scale those things back for them. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask throughout. I'm, I'm open to answering any questions as we go. And I'm certainly not an expert in any of this, but my research has shown that, um, you know, as much as we think that children couldn't possibly have anything to worry about, there's no bills to pay. Um, they do indeed have worries and they are very legitimate. The third kind of worry that children are experiencing right now is COVID worry worry about illness. Now this is a worry that is long-standing from before this pandemic but it will be heightened right now because of the pandemic. The fear that they might be able to get it, the fear that their grandparents or someone they love might have it, but the biggest fear that a child will express to you if you say just randomly if you ask them to create a list of their fears, dark, something living in the closet, we know those, right? Monster under the bed. The biggest one is mummy and daddy dying and not being there to take care of me. That is an enormous fear and worry for children. And now that the pandemic is on and they're exposed to these ideas, that worry is like way up there in their minds. So now how does this express itself? This will express itself sometimes in behavioral symptoms. So we've talked about um, the, uh, the symptoms of laziness uh, connected to, and distraction connected to academic stress. We've talked about the physical symptoms uh, connected to the too much stress. And now I wanna talk about the behavioral systems connected to, in, in this case, COVID stress. So children uh, in your house might be experiencing emotional outbursts. They might be incredibly aggressive in a way that they aren't normally. Um, they might be clingier than normal. They might not want to go, in my case, my little guy doesn't want to go to the bathroom alone right now. Fear of, of, of being alone. Um, nightmares. And then the big one is hyperactivity. Just can't stop, can't stop moving, can't stop moving. Nat says, agreed, my older boys worry about that a lot and worry about their siblings. And, and by that, and I'm going to assume that means the idea of losing mom and dad or of somebody in the house getting sick. And it's a very legitimate fear. And so um, we need to manage that as parents in a way that reduces that worry as much as possible. So the answer is that we first of all understand that news is not for children. News is not made for children, it is made for adult consumption. So when we have the news on, we have to understand that the news, not only if, it, you may think the kids are not in the room or they are in the room and they're not watching, they are somehow absorbing pieces of it. And even if, as in my case, I make sure that the kids are downstairs when I watch my news, I take on energy from the news that has um, a tension to it. And if I think that that tension doesn't disperse and spread out to the kids afterwards, I'm fully mistaken. The news impacts our kids. Our stress impacts our kids' stress. So how can we deal with this? First of all, reduce the news consumption of your children. If you can, eliminate it altogether. Um, or filter it in a way that is healthy and age appropriate. Second of all, your news consumption needs to sort of reduce as much as possible. Having the news on all day cannot be good for you either. So less news and sort of being realistic about how much information is coming at you. Um, and then the other answer is just to add more connection and stability. So making sure that the routines that you had before all of this are still around. Bedtime routines in particular, making that a really cozy and safe time where the children can feel free to express anything they need to say and get out all that worry before they just have a really nice cozy sleep. So if you've been reading stories or if you listen to a particular music or whatever, make sure you keep or instill those kinds of practices for your child. And responsibilities, making sure that they have things that they can be doing around the house to help. Having that sense of pride, 
of place and connection to a role in the family is super important. And then that quiet one-on-one -on -one time with each child makes sure that you have that with each kid. I'm not great at this because I get overwhelmed and so I have to remember, okay, I need to get out for a walk with Vincent or I need to just have quiet lie down with Althea and that really can help. So those are the three kinds of worries that kids are really experiencing right now. There's certainly more, but I would say those are the, the big ones. The COVID was the last one, the stress of too much stuff, and the worry about academic failure. So let's make sure that we are making that as easy as possible for our children. And one exercise that I found that we uh, started to do and that I'd like to start to do is keeping what's called um, a weather board. So you've seen these for the actual weather. Let me just show you. So this is a beautiful, and I'll post it later, this is a beautiful little printout that I got. And Vincent has been filling it in every day. He cuts off the piece uh, that says what the weather is like. And you will notice, look at that, last Friday was uh, or a couple of Fridays ago was snow. I can't believe we're already here in these beautiful sunshiny days. Um, but what is recommended is that we keep a weather board for our emotions. So instead of, you know, maybe it's difficult for a child to express, oh, I feel sad or I feel angry or I feel happy. But we might say, well, look inside. What is the weather like inside for you today? Oh, maybe it's rainy today or maybe it's windy and angry with lightning maybe it's starting to change to a sunnier day and the beauty of this is that you're not expressing emotions at all you're expressing this weather but it gives you as the parent an idea of what they're feeling and also you and I both know and kids know that weather changes. There's always the blue sky behind the weather. And it's really important. I used to try to express it to Althea as this idea of the roller coaster. You know, that our emotions go through this roller coaster of ideas and feelings. Well, that was a tough one to express because to her, a roller coaster just sounded awesome all the time, up or down. And so weather, I think, is the better way to sort of get to it. Yeah, it's cloudy right now. The day feels cloudy right now, but you know that sun is coming this evening. Or it's raining, but you know that that's helping the plants to grow and that tomorrow it's going to be sunny again. And the blue sky is always behind. If you took a rocket and you went up above the clouds, there's where the blue sky would be. It's always there. It's very important for us to remember that even for ourselves. So keeping a weather board. So I'm probably going to print this out again and then have them keep a weather board, but this time for their emotions. So I strongly recommend that. And today I would just like to do a short um, meditation for you um, and for the kids. It comes from this lovely little book called Sitting Still Like a Frog, Mindfulness Exercises for Kids and Their Parents. So this one speaks about the idea of the weather report. So creating your personal weather report. So I'm going to ask you to do this exercise with me as a parent now, and then you might want to do something like this with your child later. Okay, so just settle in. Deep breaths. Sit down comfortably somewhere and close or half close your eyes. And just take some time to determine how are you feeling right now? What is the weather like inside you? Do you feel relaxed and sunny inside? Or does it feel rainy and overcast? Is there a storm raging perhaps? What do you notice? And without really thinking about it too much, 
like you to summon the weather report that best describes your feelings right now at this moment. And once you know how you're doing right now, just let it be, just as it is. There's no need to feel or do anything differently. You can't change the weather outside, can you? Stay close to this feeling for a while. Direct your friendly and curious attention to the clouds, the clear sky, or the storm that is brewing. That's how it is right now. Like the weather, you can't change a mood. But later today, the weather will be completely different again. And right now, this is how things are. And that is absolutely fine. Moods change. They blow over. There is no need to take any action. What a relief. So if you can do some version of this weather exercise with your children, it will help them to understand that there's no need to make a change or to stop crying or to stop being angry or any of those things. They just need to be aware of them to understand that it will pass and that a mood is a mood just like the weather. The blue sky is always there behind. We just have to be patient enough to wait for it to come again. And it's just important that we allow our children to feel the way that they feel, to have the worries that they have, and to know that we are able to hold space for that, for them. So in the same way, oh, Nat says thank you. You're most welcome, Nat. I needed it too today. I, um, yeah, some days are better than others, right? Some days are, are sunny and, and even though our weather may be sunny today, there may be some clouds and tension inside you. So doing the weather check for yourself a couple of times a day is not a bad idea. Doing the weather check with your kids is not a bad idea. And tomorrow we have a beautiful session which will allow you to do this kind of thinking and, and to calm yourself in a beautiful way. It's called Meditation in Motion. We're going to have Wendy Williams on tomorrow at 9.30 who will be doing something I've always wanted to do, some Tai Chi for us. And so Tai Chi is a very slow moving but intentional movement that lets you get in touch with those moods and those feelings through movement um, in a beautiful way. So if you've been experiencing any of these tougher weathers, I strongly, strongly recommend, and even if you haven't, to hop on tomorrow for the Tai Chi exercise with Wendy Williams at 9.30. So thank you all. I hope this has been helpful in terms of busting that myth. Kids don't have anything to worry about. They do indeed, but they need to be able to manage it with your help. All right, my friends, we'll talk soon. Have a great day, no matter the weather.